So I'll 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 move us to a, a more a global context. You gave a, a really great introduction of in the U.S. what's being done, um, and I'd like to pass this next question uh, to to Prabhat. Prabhat, as the, as the fusion ecosystem moves towards the fusion pilot plants and commercialization, what concerns do you see regarding the global South's role in the process, and what opportunities do you envision in this in this process? Thank you. Uh, Global South uh, is not only geographical uh, concept, it's also economic concept. And that economic concept keeps changing, and the countries that are part of Global South are not really fixed. Uh, today, if I take from Steve's, he talked about industrial revolution. If I see economy before that, from 1st AD to 1800 AD, it was India and China which was producing maximum 20 to 30 percent of global manufacturing was happening in India and China. It was the industrial revolution which changed the games and uh, things moved to global north at that time. And countries like India became poorer in that process. When I look at the nuclear fusion in that context, two, three things are happening. One is that even countries like U.S. have responded to investment in nuclear fusion when there is a crisis. In 1970s, there was a fossil fuel crisis. And the U.S. invested in a major way, and this seen ups and downs as we have gone along. If I look at nuclear fusion and the uh, conference here, there are two thought processes. One is that comes to the ITER, looking at the progress of ITER, which seems to be making progress, but it still seems quite far away. We're not yet clear when we can see energy through that process. Second is a very optimistic scenario where a large number of private companies have come forward with billions of dollars of investment. And also scientific progress we have seen in Tokamax, uh, in NIF, and so on and so forth. So all of this is a hopeful thing. If I look at from India's point of view, India is right in a very interesting phase. We are the largest population in the world right now. I think we just crossed China some time back. We are the fastest growing economy uh, among the large countries. I'm expecting that in next three, four years, we'll be the third largest economy and probably by 2050, maybe the first or second economy in the world. I was expecting China to be first, but now I'm seeing signs that India will become first. Now, this, at this stage, uh, India's looking at nuclear fusion is a very um, one-sided view. India is participating in ITER project. A good amount of money is going from India's perspective because India's budget is relatively lower. And uh, so they expect that they are doing everything that is done for nuclear fusion. Now, all other countries as part of ITER also have an equivalent national project which can take the technology coming out of ITER into their national programs. India, the last machine we planned was in the 90s when I was there as part of the superconducting machine. After that, no new machines have been planned. The one old machine has been upgraded uh, a few years back. So there's, no, uh, there's not enough focus on nuclear fusion while change is happening around the globe. The word nuclear is being interpreted to mean fission. There's no differentiation between nuclear fusion and fission. So all the policymakers, word nuclear means nuclear fission uh, only. This has led to the nuclear policy, which uh, is completely focused on fission. So as a private entity, you're not allowed to work on nu nuclear for energy purpose. And that fis fusion is embedded into that. So there's no separate distinction. But other countries like UK and US and recently California has come out very strongly in this, that okay, nuclear fusion and fission are separate. So right now I'm finding it very difficult to convince the government to separate out between fusion and fission, which is very, very important. When it comes to social licensing, that's important equally because the public opinion is again based on fission. So when somebody is setting up a plant, nuclear fission plant, they would oppose it. But they will also oppose nuclear fusion plant because they don't distinguish between that. So there needs to be a great effort on trying to separate these two out. And within India, of course, this is a very important part, something that I'm trying to uh, convince people. The other thing that is happening is that Indian economy is growing fast. The young population, India is the largest young population in the world. The demographic dividend is there. All the countries of the global north are suffering from aging population. So if you talk about cooperation, there's no other way except for people to join hands with countries like India, Brazil, and so on. 
And that is something I've noticed every now and then because a lot of global investors are coming to India right now. I'm in touch with many of them. In fact, I'm going to sign an agreement just after returning back from here. There was another global company which came to my university just a few days back and they said that we are 10 years late. We should have come to India earlier. So there's a big change that is happening and cooperation in nuclear fusion is going to be very important. I was just hearing the cost of nuclear fusion as it is now is very, very high. And many private companies are likely to shut down because of the funds. And I think believe that countries like India can contribute to that by providing young, talented population. What we had seen in IT industry 20 years back. And so I believe the same thing can be done in nuclear fusion, and that will help uh, in equity across the world. Uh, one more issue that is there in terms of uh, deuterium, we have the source of water. Lithium is still uneven distribution. Firstly, India has discovered a large source of lithium recently. So India may be fortunate, but otherwise lithium is being controlled by very few countries. That's another concern that we need to. Thank you. I'll stop at this point. Thank you for those